Hello everybody, and just here, and uh, welcome back to Saihat and Paladin, episode uh, 9. Am I correct in my assumption? Indeed it is. Episode 9. Uh, if this video will be late, I can already tell, because it's 1 in the morning on Monday for me. It's no longer Sunday. So, terribly sorry for that, but uh, I had some family over, and uh, I just couldn't ignore them. I had to grab them from the airport in the early hours of the morning, and uh, they had a kid with them. So, uh, even if I could just leave them be and uh, record something, which would be, first of all, very rude, uh, recording something with a little kid running around uh, wouldn't really be possible. <laughs> right? So uh, I'm recording it really late, uh, which is why I will also be using uh, my softer voice, so be prepared for a little bit of an uh, ASMR experience. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to keep it up with my headphones on, but we'll see. Uh, right, uh, let's not talk about uh, what I did today, and uh, let's talk about what we did a week ago, and uh, we watched episode 8, so I had an Paladin. I was uh, a little bit afraid of what it's gonna be, uh, judging by episode 7 and its pacing issues, judging by the fact that episode 7 and a half was a recap and it was supposed to be episode 8. So it was supposed to even uh, cut into the runtime of the show, but thankfully it didn't. Um, it was named episode 7 and a half in the end, which is great. So uh, I was afraid of the quality of episode 8. Uh, it seems my fears were largely unfounded, because although the production quality issues were clearly visible in uh, animation, not so much in art, art, is always, um, art has always been plenty gorgeous in this series, so I can't uh, complain there. But it was certainly visible in the animation department. Uh, a lot more sliding PNGs, a lot more stills being used. But uh, the return to form came in the form of uh, better storytelling and better character, uh, you know, motivations and characters than uh, what was shown in episode 7. So this is certainly a return to form in episode 8. I can only hope that episode 9 continues from there. In episode 8, uh, we met two more characters, and uh, I need to look up their names because I already forgot. There is the hawker named Antonio, and uh, there is the... Uh, she's not a bard, she's a troubadour, as she uh, says. The troubadour Robina Goodfellow. Those are the two characters that we've met in episode 8. Um, there was also a brief mention of that it wasn't a king, it's like King's brother or something like that. His name isn't mentioned anywhere here. Yeah, but there was a mention uh, of him in the episode. And uh, yeah, we are arriving at a big city after some travels, which were, after thinking about it for a little while, uh, it was shown really well, actually. And a lot of that journey was skipped, true, but we were shown uh, them arriving at a town kind of in the middle of their journey, and uh, we were shown enough to be able to kind of extrapolate how their journey looked before that city, um, before that city, Will probably wasn't using his healing powers on the villagers, um, but uh, Robina was still playing music to attract people so that uh, Antonio can peddle his goods. And after that city, they were still doing that, with the addition of Will now also healing the townsfolk. Did I trigger something? No, I didn't. Uh, I thought for a moment that I started streaming accidentally, but no, no, I did not. Um, 
Right, uh, then we arrived at the Wheat Road, Wheat Path, something like that, which was very aptly named. We heard the Ballad of the Three Heroes, or whatever it was called, the story about them uh, fighting the Wyvern, and uh, that Wyvern just folded like a trump. <laughs> Honestly, uh, it wasn't really m too much of a fight, just one, two, and done. And uh, we've also heard of that half-elf girl, and the king, no, not a king. He was someone important. Those two kids that they rescued from, from the wyvern and gave them the dagger and some money, right? Uh, that boy became like some important figure. And uh, that girl is still alive until this day, awaiting someone to tell her Gus's true name so that she knows... Um, she can repay the debt. And uh, Will knows Gus's true name. We have, including this episode, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have whole four episodes left. So we have uh, a lot of time for that story to be fully realized, right? To come to fruition somehow. And we are yet to meet the black-haired Aragorn-looking Aragorn dude the fat priest and the priestess girl. Perhaps we will meet some of those characters in this episode, perhaps not. We'll see how it goes. It's really hard to make predictions because the story doesn't really like take us anywhere. There aren't really any like mysteries to solve or anything. We're just in for the journey. And uh, I think it's fine, honestly, that it's a it's a journey anime. There isn't much for me to speculate about, at least not right now. I'm just along for the ride, and uh, I hope you guys are along for the ride with me. Oh, that's a good segue, actually, and if you want to continue before the ride, subscribe to the channel so you get notified of future episodes of Saihat and Paladin. How's that? <laughs> I'm watching Linus Tech Tips, I'm learning from the best. Okay, uh, let's give you guys some subs. And uh, do I have the focus? Uh, yeah, my mouse is on a very short cable and it's charging. I can't do anything about it. Uh, right. Uh, focus, focus, yes. Episode 9 of Sihat and Paladin, uh, version by Subspace, yet again, as always, is gonna be starting in 3, 2, 1, go. White sails, that's the city, yeah. Yeah, he's never seen so much civilization in one place. He was born and raised in a ruins. He hasn't really seen any human being, did he? Well, let me fix up the camera a little bit. Lower. Fuck. Come on. <laughs> ah, great. Ah. Let's see what's going on, what's gonna happen in this episode. And uh, chances are I'm gonna get an actual like webcam soon, because uh, I will probably be able to retrieve some money that I'm owed and uh, I'll spend it on the camera. So there won't be any, you know, issues adjusting it, mid-recording or anything like that. It's a pain using your phone as a camera, you know? Like, the quality is better than I could get from, like, a cheap webcam. There's no doubt about it, but needing your phone to be charged and... Yeah, it's a pain. Money spent on a webcam will be money when well spent. Earl Grey with lemon. That's weird. Yeah, Ethel. Yeah, so there is no need to collect any toll. 
Yeah. Much better solution. The companies have all the money, the merchants, not your everyday person who wants to enter the city. The market, of course. Yeah, wow, people! <laughs> he hasn't seen many people, so, you know. Yeah, that's actually a great indicator. It's a great indicator of how safe the city is. Yeah, they don't have to worry about fighting and surviving. They don't have to spend money on weapons and things like that. They can afford to spend it on uh, luxuries. No, probably not. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's an aqueduct. It's, uh, there's some Roman... Yeah, definitely Roman vibes. Words of heat, words of purification. Nice. I like that they're wearing something else now. I like that they changed their clothes. It doesn't happen all that often in anime. Oddly enough. They get like one outfit and they keep it through the entire series. <laughs> yeah. It is civilization, very much so. No one says anything about his hands. That's interesting. Even Menel is smiling. They're having a grand time here. And we're gonna meet the fat priest, yeah? There's no statue of uh, that goddess. <laughs> what's her What's her face? Uh, goddess, good something. Graceful. Graceful, and he's gonna get chased out or something. Oh. Prayer of Fave Detection. Okay. So you have to wait. Hmm. And then call for the vice bishop. Ah, the fat dude. Yeah. Tell me he's a villain without telling me he's a villain. <laughs> Ch 
should appraise him. You're the Archbishop. You should be able to. Tell me you have no powers without telling me you have no powers. Maybe not quite a villain. Hmm. Maybe he's just an asshole, but not necessarily a villain. Because he doesn't have any. No, on the contrary, tell me more. Hmm. Is there a guild of paladins? Okay, attack by... Demons? Demonic beasts? Undead? A wyvern! Uh, previous episode, fighting the wyvern. Will is gonna fight the wyvern and win. Parallels? Eh, we're doing something story-wise here. Drawing parallels between the heroes of yore and the heroes of now. Okay. Don your armor and let's fucking go. How'd you get to the roof, though? Uh... Okay, what's he gonna do? Magic, blessings, melee... Okay, less talking, more fighting, Will. Okay. Flight magic. Fly up. How? Spider web. No, he's not the type to take shelter. He's the leader kind.
Okay, the fairies are gonna carry an electrified spider web. That's actually a good combo. That's a great combo. Not quite, though, yeah. Just need to draw aggro. I wouldn't be surprised if you surpassed them. By the power of Grayskull! <laughs> yeah, what is that? Some toxic miasma? Okay, final blow. Not quite. Use magic. Use your sword. Stab it again. <laughs> Just choke it. <laughs> Just fucking choke the wafer to death. <laughs> choke slammed it, snapped its neck. Ah. <laughs> uh... Not yet. Or maybe, yeah, just fucking <laughs> choked motherfucker choke, choke the wyvern to death. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, I did not expect that. <laughs> Uh, just choked that motherfucker. <laughs> Did the news reach him yet? Yeah. You choke slammed a wyvern. You choke slammed a wyvern. Yeah, with your bare fucking hands. <laughs> yeah. And you will be widely known as the Wyvern Killer. William the Wyvern Killer. Okay, he's the Crown Prince. Straight with uh, Hero.
He's standing there like a bodyguard. Yeah. You're a hero now. You need a bodyguard. <laughs> That's almost all will. Yep. <laughs> Magic, Gracefield's Blessing, and Brute Force. Yeah. Spread the faith in Gracefield. Selfless, as always. Hmm. Interesting. You're spread too thin. Yeah. Okay, we're getting... We're getting a bigger party. Creating a hero party. Yet we must try to save as many as we can. He is a threat. Powerful magic user, powerful priest, powerful warrior. It is a possibility, but I don't think he's gonna do it. I mean, the manga is still ongoing. <laughs> that episode took absolutely no time. It went by so fast, and I'm glad. I'm glad it went by so fast, because it means it was good, because it means it was engaging. I like it. I like it when I can't feel the passage of time when watching anime. That's a very good sign. We're gonna have some things to discuss after the reaction section. Definitely.
we need to meet the priestess girl. And this dude. I'm assuming he's gonna join William's party as melee DPS. Although, do they need a melee DPS? They have William. <laughs> Will is their mage, their wizard, their priest, their tank. Renowned glory. Interesting. Intriguing. It's an intriguing title. I like titles like this. Okay, let's let's go through this episode. Yeah, we arrived at White Sails. Yada 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 OP OP OP. There's no entry inspection or toll. Yeah. The uh, Crown Prince is actually smart. He knows where the money is, he knows the risks of tolls and inspections. Yeah. Money is in the merchant's pockets, not in your everyday, regular people who just want to get in and out of the city. He's smart. He's smart. Yeah, economy is their top priority. It's a uh, merchant city. It's a trading city. It's a port city, so obviously they are doing a lot of commerce, like every port city does. <laughs> it is very advanced. Although we really haven't seen much of civilization quite yet. We've only seen like villages and small towns. We haven't seen big cities. This white sails does look advanced, but perhaps there are even uh, more advanced, even more civilized cities out there. Maybe the capital. Who knows? City's biggest market. What are they selling? Some fish, some mussels, crab. Uh, some, uh, looks like langusta things, maybe big shrimp, potatoes, tomatoes or tomatillos, zucchini. Yeah, it's a nice market. These accessories are in style right now. That means these people can afford th to think about fashion. Yeah, that is... That is actually a great thing that he mentioned here. That is actually a great thing and uh, a great element of world building. And I need to remember that. Because, uh, as I mentioned during this scene, if people are busy with uh, war, with uh, famine, with uh, bandits roaming around, with uh, attacks by the undead or things like that, they don't think about spending money on uh, jewelry. They don't think about making jewelry, right? Because everybody who can work a furnace isn't making, like, you know, intricate golden brooches. They're making swords and spears and shields and armor. People don't spend their money to buy those golden brooches. They're spending money to buy necessities, if they have that money at all. So a jewelry shop, a jewelry store, is actually a great indication of just how safe and uh, wealthy this city is. That's amazing environmental storytelling. It would have probably gone past me had, uh, had Will not mentioned it. But, yeah. It's actually a great bit of storytelling, of world building mostly. I really like it. Again, this anime shows its biggest strengths. World building, character building, and storytelling. I am so glad that so far it seems like it's only episode 7 that was more or less a fluke, and even that only because it didn't get enough time. I'm convinced that if episode 7 was split into two episodes, it would have been as great as the rest of the series. 
I'm 100% convinced. Street lights. Yeah, they have words of light. Brandy sorceress, sorcerer, sorcerers. <laughs> the bathhouse. I like the uh, Roman, um, Roman feel, Roman vibe to parts of this city. It's mostly medieval Europe, but there is this aqueduct. There is this like straight out Roman bathhouse. Although the columns aren't really Roman, if I know my architecture. But the idea of like a pool in the middle with steps and with the columns around, it's very Roman. Then again, medieval times came straight after Roman times, so it stands to reason that Roman architecture would persist even during medieval, right? Words of purification used on water. Words of uh, heat, words of fire used on some rocks. Uh, this is a thing that I mentioned uh, I liked. Uh, one detail I need to pay attention to. Okay, Will does have scars on his hands. He does. They are visible. They didn't miss that. I like it. Here, his hands are not scarred, though. I'm willing to forgive and forget. I like that they didn't immediately jump into their travel gear, that Will didn't immediately jump into his uh, armor. It looks like he's wearing... Uh, it's either a sweater or a chainmail. It's really hard to tell in drawing. <laughs> it could be either. Although that split in the middle would indicate a chainmail, but it's kinda too short to be a chainmail, I don't know, doesn't matter. I like that they are wearing something different. You don't always see that in, um, in shows, especially in shows that don't really put much care into their creation. Uh, usually it's like, you know, your seasonal isekai trash, they don't care about that thing, those things. Every character has just a single costume and they wear it throughout the entire series. They like get naked, jump into a lake to wash up, they get out and they wear their the same clothes, the same armor again. They don't have like casual clothes or anything like that. Or if they do, there's like a Big deal made out of it. Oh, I've never seen you in casual clothes. You look so cute and whatnot, right? It's it's a very minor thing, and perhaps you might think that it's not worth mentioning. But I believe it is. I believe it very much is worth mentioning. And it's worth praise because it shows that they put care in their work. Again, my initial impressions ring true that they are doing the most they can with the limited budget and limited resources they have. But this is a series made with love, this is a series made with care. Definitely. That I am sure of. It's not your everyday seasonal tr uh, isekai trash. Definitely not. That's some nice food. Anime food always looks great. There's some uh, octopus, some fish, some mussels, some prawns, shrimp, caviar. Uh, some grain and lemons, some good food. Yeah, tastes like civilization. It's not a boar leg fried over an open flame with just some salt and pepper sprinkled on. <laughs> it's civilization. Uh, it they could afford to like stew it for two days straight or something. Right? Now we'll head to the temple. It's a big temple. Mm -hmm. Prayer of Fave Detection. This dude, perhaps not quite a villain, because he allowed Will to you know, walk around and he 
Aida offered some advice, as rude as he might have been. Yeah, put his name in the registry, show him around the temple. They even got great rooms at the temple. We haven't performed the prayer of faith detection. Ooh, doesn't matter. Hmm. That priest is still an enigma, although. Hmm, how unpleasant it might have been. Uh, the head of the temp- oh, the head of the temple. Is Bishop Bagley the head of the temple, or is there another head of the temple? I think Bagley might be the head of the temple. Mm. Okay, uh, there was some line. A little bit before. But I don't think I can find it anymore. Uh, but there was some talk about uh, nobody seeing him use any blessings. Or that he doesn't use his blessings anymore or something like that. Could it be? Could it be that he either, either A. Uh, lost the grace of whatever god he praises because of his debauchery, or B, he serves an evil god and needs to hide it. Either of those could be true. Why would he help Will then? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. His actions are in direct contrast to his character and uh, the expectations that everything we heard about him built. So, yeah, I don't want to make any predictions yet. Uh, perhaps in the next few episodes, well, few, we have three episodes left, but in the next couple of episodes we're gonna know more about him. Yeah. Wyvern attack. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Um, apparently... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yourself killed. Why? How? Uh, does it go back to the episode when Gus told Will that his pronunciation is too precise and uh, if you cast too strong of a spell then you can get yourself killed perhaps it's that yeah i think that might be it in which case i believe back in that episode i mentioned that i want to see if it ever uh, comes into play in later episodes that would be nice because that would mean it came into play right now. And I love it. I love it that those little tidbits of lore, of world building, of, um, of the mechanics of magic and all that jazz are becoming relevant as time goes on. We're getting little callbacks to the first half of the season and I really like it. I really, really like it. Be more efficient. He must take shelter below quickly. No, he does seem... He seems like a good ruler to me. He seems like the leader kind and uh, not like the cowardly, uh, cowardly ruler type. Uh, I'm willing to bet that if he had any sort of um, combat proficiency, He'd be out there in the streets fighting. I'm willing to bet that he's the exact kind of person that would do that. And this is actually a great idea. Create an electrified uh, spider web and let the fairies carry it. Your magic has limited range. Fairies probably don't. They are like spiritual creatures, so they aren't 
bound by things like range. They can carry this however far you need it to be carried. As a fair user too, yeah. Yeah, probably not hurting it enough, but you managed to draw aggro. And the shield. And this weird miasma. Uh, I might be wrong here, but I think... I think we've seen that the miasma around... Um, uh, what's his face? Around stagnate. Let me look it up. Uh, stagnate, so I had a paladin. Mm -hmm. Why am I seeing screenshots from Overlord? <laughs> That's not what I wanted to see. No, it looks different. It's not the same kind of miasma. But there is some smoke surrounding Stagnate, but it's not the same kind of smoke. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have that settled. But it's some kind of miasma that turns beasts from around here much more aggressive and much more deadly, apparently. It doesn't turn them undead, so it's probably not the Stagnate's doing after all. It's something else entirely. Some god of plague? Probably some sort of a plague deity. It's bound. Stabby stab. Stab is not enough. But we'll just <laughs> uh, we'll just fucking choke that wiper to death. <laughs> oh man, you just just what can I say? Just chokes that wiper, <laughs> slams it onto the ground, and chokes it to death. Ah, uh, like not even not even blood did something like that in the ballad, and he's the exact type of person who would do that. It took Mary, Gus, and blood to subdue that wife, and we'll just fucking choke slam it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, Antonio and Bea are making a little bit of a scene here. Yeah, wink wink, let's praise our hero. They are quick to jump onto something like that. They are really quick to recognize that Will could use a little bit of, uh, you know, brand building, so to speak. And they are the first ones to jump onto it immediately. Uh, those faces are interesting. <laughs> Nobody has a nose. I had no idea so many magic users and the warriors strong enough to kill a wyvern and we were staying here. Little did you know they are one and the same person. Uh, Will is way too humble. I was reminded of how inexperienced I am. It was great for a first attempt. Uh... Dude, you choke slammed a wyvern. Yeah, critique yourself all you want, but at least be a little happy. You choke, sl you choke slammed a wyvern. You choke slammed a wyvern. A slot I could. What could you have done better? Bit his head off. Choke slam it faster. You need what more grip strength so you can just guillotine the head off with your forearms. What could you have done better, my dude? Maybe work on the range of your magic, but strength wise, I mean, fuck me. <laughs> yes, you are a wyvern killer.
uh, meeting with the crown prince, yada yada yada, etiquette, high birth, yada yada. Uh, which makes a magic user a priest. Okay, he thinks that his that Will's party is four people: a magic user, a priest, a fairy user, and a warrior. Uh, not quite. Traveling priest, which makes up a warrior, a magic user, and a priest. <laughs> Hunter and a fairy user, merchant and bard, which are just mostly dead weight. No, not really. They uh, they make money for the party, I guess. That's actually an interesting idea. I, I never played D&D, full disclosure. But I wonder, how would it be if you had like a party of actual warriors, and then someone who is just specialized in getting money? You'd perhaps be like a bard, and you'd put all your skills, all your points, anything, nothing into combat, everything into swindling uh, people from people from their money, everything into like getting money for your performances, you'd buy some random shit in one village and sell it in another as you travel. That would be an interesting idea for a character. Probably boring to play, but maybe not. I don't know, never played D&D as I mentioned. Uh, one who shot lightning at the wyvern, Will. One who made the wall of light, Will. One who controlled air currents, Menel. One who broke its neck, Will. <laughs> If that makes four people, it is indeed correct we are two of them. That doesn't... that sounds kind of weird. Yeah, what does that mean? Men are called the fairies. Spread words and manipulated the air currents. So, is he... Is Will trying to imply he might spread the words? Is he trying to make Manel a fairy user and a magic caster? And uh, take the role of the warrior and the priest on himself? What is he doing here? He's the fairy user, yeah. And the rest. Or maybe not. Because he now says that from what Will said, it turns out that Manel is just the fairy user was me. Do you mind telling me what you did? I choke slammed a wyvern. Uh, weird that she, that he doesn't mention uh, everything else that he did. Like I'd take that question of what you did as tell me like all that you did. Like I cast the magic to create the net to bring it down. Then I prayed to Graceville to create the barrier, and then I choke slammed the bitch. Of course, Will is completely selfless and completely humble. Way too selfless. Way too humble for my personal tastes. But it works for him as a character. I'm not saying it's it's a badly done character. Just not necessarily the kind of character I'm really into. Although I do like Will. I do like him. It's just that uh, too much uh, modesty uh, can get, you know, grating after a while. And I hope we don't get to that point. Uh, we didn't get to that point. I was kind of afraid of that in a couple episodes past. Uh, of Will, like, thanking the gods for everything he eats and every, uh, like, I know, good night's sleep and, oh, praise Gracefield. We didn't get into that territory. Uh, we did get a couple of instances of it to uh, reinforce that fact that he is a devout believer. But after that fact was established, uh, we kind of let that go. Hopefully, it's the same with his modesty. That he's overly modest here, and uh, in later episodes, he's just gonna be modest. And uh, the people he talks with are not gonna be pushing it. Something. Reward. Of course, he wants soldiers sent 
the villages. We expanded our domain too much. Um, that explains why those villages on the outskirts, um, or maybe not on the outskirts, but kind of on the frontier, are so poor and suffering so much. They spread themselves too thin. They barely have... We cannot even sufficiently protect the villages we directly govern. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. You'd think that with so many people arriving here and living here and trading with this place, they would have enough adventurers and thrill seekers and all sorts of people to spread out safely and keep all those villages and towns protected. Apparently not. Perhaps there is just a core kind of cluster of villages and towns centered around white sails that is well protected by white sails government. And then all those fringe villages are inhabited by uh, rejects from the main gov from the main continent. We heard that that's the story, right? All the criminals and misfits and uh, all kinds of scum are coming to South Mark to kind of reset their uh, social status and they go into the outskirts and they live in those villages. Perhaps they don't want to live in the cities. Perhaps they cannot live in the cities. Or perhaps the previous ruler of White Sails was the one who decided to spread their influence as far as they can, but didn't do enough to secure it. That could be it as well. I wonder, I wonder... Would you give me permission to hire adventurers and mercenaries with my own money? Like, at least ask him for the money for recruitment? How selfless can you be? Must also consider the option of killing you, ending. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of how selfless Will is, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, he wants to protect... Yeah. Will wants to protect the people, right? He wants to uh, build that little party of his, kind of a small army of uh, mercenaries and adventurers. And he wants to do it with his own money just asks for permission to recruit people. I don't think he would need such a permission, so he kind of wastes his, uh, his wish that could have been used differently. Um, ask the king to give you a stagecoach and a couple of horses, so you can travel faster. Ask the king to give you gold to recruit adventurers and uh, mercenaries. Ask the, well, not the king, the crown prince. Ask him to give you armor, to give Menel a better bow. Ask him to give you provisions. Ask him to give you a uh, tax exemption in the city. Ask him to give you a house. Ask him to give you something, you know? There are so many things that Will could have asked for that would have made his quest of rescuing as many people as he can, of helping as many people as he can, much easier. In his selflessness, he becomes... He he kind of loses the uh, purpose, if that makes any sense, right? Like his purpose, his goal here is to help as many people as he can. 
but due to his selflessness, he won't be able to help as many people as he would be able to help if he was a little bit selfish. Right? And now, again, to reiterate, that fits Will's character perfectly. I have absolutely no qualms about Will being the way he is. It's just my personal gripe, okay? And uh, I will have to deal with it. <laughs> that's not on the show creators, that's not on, uh, on the source material, that's on me. To, you know... Uh, I just want to make sure that you know that. That's purely my, uh, my personal opinion, my personal preference. When it comes to characters. Hmm. Yet again, I'm kind of left at a loss thinking what's gonna happen in future episodes. Because we are still along for the journey, there isn't really much that I could predict. Like I can predict that we're gonna meet that black haired dude with a fur with a fur uh like, thing, fur coat, or whatever it is, a fur collar, I guess. I can predict that, because he's in the ED, and he looks like an adventurer, a mercenary, and perhaps a drunkard. And uh, we're gonna recruit him in our party. And uh, he's gonna travel with us. I can predict that the priest might be, uh, like, the bishop, or the vice-bishop, or whatever his title is, might be a little bit shady, because we were shown that he is shady, and people talked about how he is shady, and uh, he behaves like a shady character would behave, and the music that accompanies him is the music that accompanies shady characters, so we can make an educated guess here. But I don't know where are we going uh, story-wise, you know, taking the overarching story into account. I don't think that in the three episodes remaining we're gonna get into the source of the miasma and uh, somehow fix that. I don't think there's quite enough time. Mm. Yeah, I don't know where the I don't know where the story is going. I honestly don't. Perhaps because we set off at the beginning with a very wide, very long-term goals, because Will's plan is essentially like a 10-year plan, right? Because in 10 years, Stagnate will be back, and he will try to free that demon king or whatever. So that's our overarching story, overarching goal. There's nothing that would span... 12 episodes. Will's journey, I guess, but how do you give journey a climax if that journey has no goal? Right? I wonder how they handle it. I, I really wonder how they will handle the ending of uh, this season. What's gonna happen in the last episode? I I really, really, really wonder. Perhaps, and I'm kind of afraid of that, it's going to be a uh, non-ending. In that Will's going to assemble his party, and they're going to fight some battle with uh, the undead. Nothing like too epic, just a skirmish with the undead. And the last frame of the last episode is going to be Will and his party heading off into the distance with uh, white sails walls behind them and the sun shining and some nice music and a zoom out on that still frame. I fear that might be how we end this season, and it would be a pity, but at the same time I can't imagine any other ending. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, there's there's no point speculating here, right? Because there isn't anything that would indicate any anything about the story in the next few episodes. Maybe 
something with the archbishop. They're gonna expose him or something. And that's gonna be the ending. The priestess girl is gonna kiss Will on the cheek. And we're gonna end like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, and uh, I don't want to waste your time just widely speculating here. So uh, I'm just going to end this here. But uh, tell me in the comments, what do you think is going to happen? Just no spoilers, please, because I know the manga is ongoing. The light novel probably is as well. So if you read those, don't spoil me anything, please. I'm along for the ride, despite any of my complaints or anything like that. I'm fully along for the ride. And uh, I want to discover every everything that happens myself. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen? If you've never seen this uh, series and you're watching it alongside me, tell me what do you think? Uh, what do you thought of this episode? Do you, re do you think, just as I do, that it's a return to form? Or do you have any qualms about it that you didn't have about, about the first six episodes? I'm curious. What do you thought of my reaction? Did you like it? If so, leave a like. Did you dislike it? If so, leave a dislike, but tell me why in the comments so I can improve. I can't things I can't fix things that I don't know are broken. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want to be notified of my future releases, it's not only Saihato no Paladin, but also Tsukito Laika to Nosferatu on Tuesdays, uh, Tact of Destiny on Wednesdays, Princess Principal on Thursdays, and Saihat and Paladin on uh, Sundays. Well, this one will probably come out on Monday for some of you. For some of you, maybe it will be still Sunday. Who knows? Time zones are weird. If you really like what I'm doing, you can support me on Patreon. Link is down in the description for just a dollar a month. You can get access to my Discord server for 10 bucks. You get early access to any non-seasonal shows. Currently, it's only Princess Principal, but uh, in the next season, after we're done with my current lineup, it might be more. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to be watching after I'm done with my current shows, so I can't speak anything about that. Uh, right, all the other shows that I'm watching you can find in the cards in the top right corner of your screen. Uh, they, they're going to link you directly to the playlist, so give them a watch if you feel like it. And uh, yeah, it's already been over an hour, so uh, I will have to end this here. So as always, do all the good stuff, and uh, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Cheers!